One built-in chaining functionality that comes with JavaScript is promise. A lot of people, when they talk about promises, will often return values. So if we simply say test, and we have a promise that resolves one, I'll log out whatever that value is, right? And then I'll do a promise.resolve or return a promise.resolve. And to make it a little bit more explicit here, I'll say return promise.resolve value plus one. If we want to test this out, we can actually go test then and then log what the result comes out. It's going to resolve with one and that one and that value right there, we're then going to take that value and add one. And so you can keep chaining down the lines and hide that implementation inside of a function. What that does is it allows us this test function here to return a promise. But the one thing that thens do and promises in general do is a flat map. And what that means is you can take either a promise or a value. So I can literally just do value plus one, return that, and it'll take it as well. It'll resolve it in the promise. So you don't have to do a promise return here. You could return anything. As long as it's not an error, it won't trigger the catch. And so this is one way we can chain things. If we simply take out or extract like we did before, where we have our value plus one here, Right? It's a nice arrow function. It does an implicit return here with this. We can extract that function out. And so we can say const add one. And whatever value you give it, it'll go ahead and add a one to that value. Which means that we can then take that add one function, put it inside the then. It'll automatically call it with one parameter, take the return value, and continue it down the function chain, or the promise chain in this case. We still get two. So it's just another way to do chaining.